Um, do we have any, uh, any gamers in the room? Anyone playing games? Like anyone, uh, Stream Deck users? Stream Deck is like a small, like a portable console. When I travel, I like to take it with me. And one of the games that I recently play is called Vampire Survivors, and it's kind of like a super retro, super simple. Basically, you just need to use one, um, one joystick to point your character. So that's why I was inspired by the style and static of this game, and I turned my slides into this kind of like a pixel world. Also, it's a 2024. So if you're not using generative UI on your slides and the pictures, so you're missing out something. So all the slides are generated through uh, Midjourney, uh, collectively working with the chat GPT to develop a solid a prompt. And after that, uh, turn this into something like a pixel art. So in this picture, there's a, some sort of scientist that stands next to a, what do you see here, stream, right? And try to quickly get some information of it try to get something uh, interesting from the stream and learn some of the insights, maybe some of the stories from the stream. So this is what we're going to be doing today. Um, just give me an idea. I understand I've been, I've been in the multiple sessions here and I've seen uh, people super excited about uh, the code, meaning that there are some developers. Do we have any like data people, uh, data, database administrators, uh, the data engineers, a um, few people here? Um, so, I'm sorry, <laughs> because there would be some of the SQL, as a developer, I used to hate SQL, and I was like, eh, I don't need this, I will write everything in my, in my code. But uh, there also will be something for, for Java developers. So, as a, all great stories, everything starts with a tweet. Someone, that's, that's how we live uh, these days. And um, one of our uh, community uh, members, uh, Robert Zick, he asked this, uh, the question, um, uh, when he had the conversation with one of the, one of the committers to Kafka Streams, um, John Rosler, and where in which use case to use Kafka Streams and uh, which way to use uh, like uh, the databases, full-blown database like Apache Pino, for example. And as always, as a <laughs> things can go um, from there very quickly. It can be threads or it can be something else. Where's my uh, friend and colleague, Tim? I said that it might be potentially needs to be a talk because you can start talking about certain things you and understand there is no right way uh, or there is no solution. And as any senior uh, developer or software engineer, you all understand that there's no right solution. There's only trade-offs. So yeah, and actually there was a podcast about this. Uh, I will uh, link at the end. There's a real-time analytics podcast where one of the episodes uh, with this, this like it's it's, it's a incep inception of this of this talk. Uh, my name is Victor Gamov. I work as a head of developer advocacy at a company called Startree. Uh, we are one of the biggest committers to um, uh, real-time analytics database called Apache Pino. Anyone heard about Apache Pino here? few people. Uh, that's okay. We're going to change that at the end. Um, and also, since I work uh, at Apache Pino and uh, I work at Startree, don't think if I would put the, um, the real-time database uh, at the end of this presentation, meaning that I have um, some sort of like a nepotism to it. So it's just the way how this was flown. And uh, obviously, I do have some sort of like a, um, attachment to the, to the technology that I'm working on. But hey, um, I hope uh, it will make sense at the end when we will uh, cover all the examples. <clears throat> so, the monolith. Uh, something, something that where people struggle to, um, to break down the recent years. But for many years, the monoliths, uh, they were solving its purpose. You have your application. Um, you have your database. You might have some sort of uh, business logic front end. So it was easy and simple. Everything was one place. And a database, in these cases, was used the place where you store an entity of something. So you, you're storing the state of this entity. If uh, you have a user order um, and uh, you're creating this order written to this database, it will be written, uh, obviously, in a, in a transactional fashion. It will be... Um, durable, so it will not disappear anywhere. And when you need to change, uh, something change with this older order, you issue some sort of query, like update. So this database was always will have a state, state of something or, or, or some entity. Um, and 
The uh, monolithic applications, apart from the being uh, very difficult to, it was easy to reason about, e easy to talk about, at the point where we start getting a lot of um, information in our systems, and there would be a lot of entities. They need to be, um, maybe sometimes need to be intermingled together. And this is actually start uh, the whole movement of, okay, so let's break this down, all these monoliths. Um, and one of the one of the solutions for uh, bringing down the things you kind of like you have your monolith you have some sort of like uh, uh, the processor um, that would be reading this data from the, your monolith and will shipping the changes to some uh, another system so systems uh, uh, that perform any type of ETL informaticas of the world and some custom jobs where the people uh, were writing so you get the data from your mon monoliths and ship it or replicate it to another place. Um, another approach is a change data capture where we're not listening on the entities, we're listening on the something that um, is uh, more a low level. So we're capturing each individual change of this order. So instead of taking the current state of the order, using CDC, it's kind of a low level mechanism that will be tapped into your database uh, transaction log or write ahead log and read this data and stream this data to um, some sort of system that supports of storing this type of information. But um, mobile era, um, era of internet, and the things with uh, when the amount of data that uh, flows through the system um, pushed many developers, architects to design system in the sense that monoliths is not uh, enough anymore um, and simply data doesn't fit in one place anymore. So distributed systems, distributed databases, distributed um, NoSQL databases, things where everything will be um, not stored in one computer. And we start building um, data pipelines. We start using the uh, event-driven systems. And one of the, uh, the conduit that we use to, for these systems to communicate. In the past, you might be, you know, use database to uh, commingle your service or your services to communicate. Now, it's, I would say, uh, let's actually, let me ask you, how many of you are using the Kafka in any sort uh, on your projects? Okay, so this is much better, uh, a much better number than uh, like people who use um, uh, like Apache Pino, for example. So. Kafka was designed to be to push the data faster from um, from the places where the data were uh, initiated to the places where data will be used. So what they were did, um, they wanted to speed up all the Hadoop jobs. So that's why like loading files um, into um, into the system in Hadoop was super slow for LinkedIn. So they came up with Kafka. And over the years, um, they designed. The, the, uh, there's multiple people designed multiple different approaches how Kafka can be used not only for data pipelines and uh, moving data around, but also for some of the microservice communications, so data-driven applications, data event-driven applications, and stuff like that. So, um, with this, it's kind of it was everything was the premise. So we're going to be focusing on this thing that Kafka, Kafka already captured. Generally speaking, you can say that uh, this can be replaced with um, any existing streaming uh, solutions, uh, for example, Apache Pulsar or maybe Amazon Kinesis. Anyone uh, Pulsar users? Even less than, than uh, Pino users. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, so uh, the Kafka is the standard for um, dealing with some sort of streaming data. And Kafka changed the way how we think about the data and how we reason about the data. When we talk about monolith, um, we were thinking about um, uh, the concept of tables, entities, and all these type of things. With uh, Kafka, Kafka introduced new concept, introduced the concept of the log. So log is very simple data structure. You have sequence of events. Those events are immutable. So you're not changing those, and you're only writing them down. With the log, you cannot query the log because uh, a log uh, doesn't have the capabilities to be queried. You can only navigate through the log. There is the ability to move the pointer over the log. But to query this, you need to have something else. One of the examples what I like to use and uh, what the uh, media was talking about is that how this can be presented in the normal world. So think about the log is a book that you're reading from beginning to the end. Um, as a multiple readers, uh, or Kafka can be presented uh, rather, um, multiple readers can read the same book at the same time. Um, different readers, they might have different 
understanding or different needs to read the book. For example, I'm dumb dumb, I'm interested only in the pictures. So I will be just uh, scrolling through this uh, book from the beginning to the end looking for pictures. There will be some people who would be interested in learning how many words there. So they need to go and find some information. And some people would be interested to understanding the actual story. So digging into the, um, into the essence of this, uh, of this data. So in this case, we can uh, come up with three distinct use cases that I will be uh, using in, in this presentation. One use case is the stateless stream processing. In stateless stream processing, I don't need to have any memory about the past. I just need to go through and get the you know, number of pages where, where the pictures. And I will just skip the pages where there are no pictures. Um, second use case, when I actually counting something, I, it's a more like a stateful stream processing. I'm, I'm uh, reading the book and I need to store the sum in aggregate, some sort of uh, aggregate function of the word. So I need to see the word, I need to see plus one, plus one, plus one. And at the end, I need to run some sort of reducing function that will does summing of these words. At the end, I'll have a word Kafka in the book about Kafka uh, was seen, I don't know, 10,000 times. And when I need to learn the story, when I need to make sense out of it, first of all, I need to read everything. Or maybe if it's a long book or it's a series of the books, the story will be continued developing. So that's why it's a never ending story. And I also would like to um, run some sort of more sophisticated queries, not only like finding the uh, index. So that's why I need to I need to understand who is the main character, who is the, uh, the relationship between the characters and things like that. So this will um, um, separate two type of queries that I will be focusing. Transactional one, simple retrieval of the data. Um, like I said, log is not easy to query, but if you need to like, uh, get something uh, quickly, you can go to particular offset and uh, get, or the particular uh, bookmark and get this by key. When we need to have a little bit more um, stories out of it, we need to use more analytical approach to this. And uh, we're going to look how different solution will solve uh, both transactional use cases and analytical use cases. Okay. Um, <clears throat> this is where um, kind of like um, um, the, the streams are crossing and uh, there's uh, streams that happened uh, on, uh, on on transactional data, like uh, like I said, the, the, you you know the order number, you know the order number, based on the order number, you will be able to retrieve the current state. Um, with the the all app, more kind of like analytical queries, based on the you don't care about the individual order, you need to know how many orders were and how number of orders affected revenue, for example. So we're gonna that's that's why we're gonna be looking into this one. Now. So I will be bringing a few solutions that I would like to discuss. Some of them will have some examples, like hands-on examples where you can play around and I may be showing some code. Some of the examples would be uh, theoretical for the sake of just not the blowing the, the, this talk out of proportion. So first one, uh, technology, uh, I will be talking a little bit about the Kafka Connect, which is, uh, um, I would say, um, it's a E and L in ETL if you're talking about anything from Kafka because Kafka Connect allows you to bring data in. Uh, you can load data into Kafka and you can get data out. You can uh, extract data from Kafka using uh, Kafka Connect. Uh, we're going to be talking about Kafka Streams, which is another... Any uh, users of Kafka Streams, by the way? A few people. Okay, great, great. My favorite people because uh, it's Java. Um, it's a library, and uh, this is. Uh, I, 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 again, not trying to create the nepotism and uh, and stuff like that. Um, just uh, Kafka streams. It's the, um, it's the most easier thing to talk about the stream processing to Java developer or any type of developer. Uh, we're gonna touch on the streaming SQL. Um, I, I've um, I've spoke with a few people. Uh, over the course of yesterday, a uh, few speakers and talk about the, the explosion of different tools and technologies that uh, uh, for the last five years appeared in the both of the format of uh, streaming databases, stream processing tools. And uh, it is also the motivation to put them here is to like give some guidance for the people who planning to, um, I don't know, maybe build some of their career for the next couple of years using those technologies. Um, cl uh, cloud data warehouses, um, data lakes technologies, and uh, last but not least, the real-time analytical database. 
Uh, and by the way, uh, stay until the end. Uh, Pino is not the only one. Um, <laughs> okay, so um, um, our transformation story starts with Kafka Connect. So um, Kafka itself is relatively simple. API is relatively simple. There's a producer, there's consumer, and pretty much it. And for many, um, for some time, I'm not going to say like many years, for some time, people were just more than enough using producer and consumer situation. And especially if they need to do some sort of data movement, they can use a console utility like cat. You can have a, the parse the file, pipe this file into Kafka producer, and your data will be loaded into, um, into Kafka topic. Another use case would be you have the, your Java application that constantly reading from SQL, um, turn it into something, push it into Kafka producer. That's your basically uh, the load functionality of your application. And uh, many people notice that, okay, so we're doing the same stuff over and over again. We're doing this for the, the different data sources or sometimes for the same data sources, but we need to write this code. And there's a lot of code that's kind of non-functional, code that not related to your business logic at all. For example, to make sure that you have a correct retries, you have a, a correct ability to restart some of the jobs, uh, for the health checks, configuration management, all the things that it's non-functional in, in your application. So they was like, okay, how about we create the framework? So the people would just only focus on the thing that would be relative to their use case, like extract data from Oracle database and push it to Kafka, or um, read data from Kafka and push it into Elasticsearch. So that's going to be kind of like one of the, one of the use cases where the Kafka Connect will be shining and why it is, matter, why it is uh, important for, um, for the sake of our talk. It is a relatively easy a tool to implement the query engine for your application. So um, in this case, you have your, your stream inside the Kafka. You have a Kafka Connect connector that will be reading data from the Kafka, and you just dump it into any database of your choice that you love and, uh, and care for many years. You understand how to work with this, and you pr probably will be done. So you're turning the stream into the table. You take in all this history of the events uh, that happens in um, shove them into the place where you feel comfortable for querying. And it's, uh, it's a quite honorable thing to do, right? Um, and uh, uh, absolutely a valid use case. Here's a, um, um, the, it's, it's kind of like a controversial. You can say that, okay, so why I only use, can use it for small data? And uh, <laughs> since it's Kafka was designed to be used in the big data, right? So like, why use the small data? Um, uh, I, I mean that it's just for the sake of um, um, uh, how your complexity of the system that needs to query this the, uh, Kafka stream, um, how the complexity of the system will grow. Um, in this case, um, that there are some situations where like, maintaining Kafka is difficult and maintaining another database that will be, uh, we will use for querying data from Kafka also will be difficult. Uh, difficult. So that's why I'm saying like a full smaller data. It can be used for gigabytes and the hundreds of gigabytes is totally fine. Um, a solely transactional approach. Um, um, so we get the data from Kafka topic. We turn it into um, something that is, um, will be represented as a table or something that would be as a document. It also can be um, in other use case. You can use a, a, a transactional database. You can use a document oriented database. You can use things like search and things like that. Um, and uh, since uh, your users need to uh, deal with the system, usually as a designer of the system, usually as an architect of the system, you decide something that users are familiar with. So it is quite familiar. People are just saying, hey, um, can I have the stream of order changes um, to, my, to my database? Now, this is how I try to represent a Kafka stream. So this is something that sits in between the stream and doing something for the stream. So Kafka Streams, it is a Java library uh, that is um, part of uh, Kafka implementation. It's a part of the built-in implementation. So that's why it has a very deep connection <laughs> with, with Kafka. So um, it is uh, the part, part of Apache Kafka. And um, this is what um, I would probably use uh, for, I don't know, 80% of the times if I need to do something uh, more or less custom. So um, let's talk about uh, Kafka Streams. So uh, we, we're getting data directly from Kafka, so there's no the, the infrastructure needs to be maintained. Um, there's a concept of a key table, 
that will be representing our state that we want to query from the stream. So the, um, the, the stream can be materialized inside key table. Uh, and uh, the forms, uh, since the Kafka, nature of the Kafka, each event will have um, a key and value. Um, if same, um, same metaphor or same kind of abstraction, also mimicking into framework itself. And Kafka streams being a Java library um, and uh, highly rely on um, uh, the architecture of uh, producer and consumer in Kafka, also will be relying on some of the underlying um, uh, mechanisms like consumer groups and number of partitions uh, between the uh, inside the Kafka topic. Um, let me actually, instead of this small slide, I can I will show you like quick quick example. Um, let me see. So uh, Docker Compose, uh, everything will be running in Docker. And one of the one of the applications that uh, I will be doing this is a simple use case that will demonstrate the um, transactional nature of the of the data. So we have a stream of uh, of, of movie data. We want to have a word count. It's uh, bread and butter of uh, any use any examples if any type of um, uh, data processing system. Uh, the Hadoop uh, did this, uh, Spark did this, and every system has its own word count. For Java developers specifically, by the way, are we going for black or for white? Uh, I don't know what's the uh, what's the uh, what's the preference here. Which one is better, white or black? I cannot hear you. I cannot hear you. Okay. Uh, um, for the for the people who said the, the black one, I have a console and console is black. So there's a kind of like there's no right solution. There's a trade-offs, right? Um, so uh, if you ever use, hopefully, uh, anyone Java eight and plus users, um, anyone streams API, like Java util streams. So the Kafka streams. The, that's, what, that's why Kafka Streams also will be very familiar to you, uh, because a lot of things that are uh, implemented in the Kafka Streams also like influenced and uh, um, kind of sort of uh, was taken from the um, uh, Java Util Streams uh, API. So um, the uh, producer just reads the file and just like every line will ship it into. Um, into uh, into Kafka topic. So, let me show you. I have um, <coughs> where's my uh, do uh, my Kafka cluster. Um, I'm I'm using Red Panda console as a visualization tool. It's pretty cool. Um, and if I will do stuff like, where is it? Uh, should it'll run uh, inside the topics. I'll have an input topic. And I'll see a bunch of messages. Like each message will include something like this, you know, information about the movie, blah blah blah. Just uh, doesn't doesn't matter what we have here. So the next thing is that um, we will use, I will use, and you will watch um, Kafka Kafka streams. One of the things that uh, that it makes easier, so you don't need to think on a lower level of uh, consumer or producer. Uh, you uh, operating on the notion of a uh, stream. You have a stream builder where you have uh, your uh, input topic that will be represented as a stream. Uh, we use the flat map function. Let's do a photo. Uh, uh, yeah, so we use the flat map uh, uh, the function that will um, essentially every line would be split it into words. And after that, uh, we're going to be uh, the turning this into another stream. Uh, that will be uh, will be represented by word and like one occurrence of this word. That's kind of like algorithm. You you kind of like uh, sending the, to this to, to another stream, and after that you applying the um, the reducing function. In this particular case, uh, we have this count function uh, to 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 the number of uh, messages, and uh, this will be spit out as a result. So. Um, if I run this uh, with a little bit of luck, uh, yeah, of course, the, the topic was not created, and I need to create the output of it. So, do, 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 I can do output topic. Uh, the, some time ago, Kafka had this uh, the auto create topic uh, uh, 
configuration was disabled, so now you need to explicitly create a topic if you need to have a result output there. So um, result of output messages would look like this. It's a key, so this is word what we're counting, and the value. Uh, well, that's not super readable, but if you would read the binary code, or if this UI would read the binary code, you will understand this is the, um, this is how the binary representation of serialization of uh, a long value, essentially. Um, we get the data from Kafka. We did something with this data and ship it this back, back to Kafka. So that's the process. That's the, um, that's the essence of stream processing. Read, process, write. And also, since, since we're talking about this, I just wanted to use this opportunity to um, uh, mention this very quickly because usually it creates a lot of uh, misconceptions about exactly one processing uh, that uh, was announced a couple years ago and it was created a lot of controversial how it's possible to do like exactly once because we know that exactly once is not possible. So exactly once processing is um, addressed in the format when you read, process, and write back. Not another way around. Not that you, you, um, you produce data, data lent to Kafka, and after that it will be consumed. Um, that's the wrong way of thinking this. It's always about a reading stream of data, do the processing, and ship it back. And the Kafka the streams has support, built-in support for exactly one processing. If there's a, some duplicates and problems and stuff like that, Kafka streams uh, are aware about this one. Now, to getting the, the, to this data, also not in this particular format, is not super, uh, is not super convenient because we need to, uh, again, we end up in the same situation. We did just some sort of processing, but how we can get this to this data? So how we can get data to this result? Um, and one of the, one of the solution would be um, accessing data inside uh, what we call state store. So um, this, before this account um, key table will land in materialized in Kafka topic, it actually can be materialized inside your application. Like think about hash map, that hash map um, uh, in, in your application um, but this is much cooler because this is also um, backed by a r real embedded database called RockDB. Um, but it's still not answering the question how I can do this. And the uh, interactive query, which is the part of the Kafka Streams framework, this is the answer. Um, essentially, it allows me, let me show you, to expose my uh, one of the uh, state store that will include my actual counts of the word um, as some sort of API. So in this particular case, using this, uh, this Spark library, whatever, so, so I can run this embedded uh, web server. So in, um, <clears throat> if I go with this, uh, uh, okay, so I'll create this one. So if I will go with HTTP, so in this case, now I'm able to query this one. Oh, actually, 42 is pretty nice. It, it was not totally unprepared. Um, it's, uh, so in this case, I, based on the key, I will be able to get the value. Uh, but again, uh, if I'll just do something, uh, can I do something like Alice? Probably, because there was information about um, the movies, there probably would be some sort of like Alice in, or actress or movie about it. Let's see if we have a lethal weapon. Yeah, there's uh, some, some mentions of the uh, lethal weapon, probably, I hope. Um, so, yeah, so with the Kafka streams, you have ability. It's a built-in. It reads the Kafka topic. It's, um, it's there. It's nice. You know, uh, if you want to, to use it, it's simple to use. Um, we talk about the materialized. So for, for analytical type of use cases, when we need to get deeper inside this, so not only we don't know keys, we need to do some sort of aggregation. We need to know the, what's the, I don't know, what's the frequency of particular word uh, within um, some sort of window or things like that. So we need to ask like a little bit more questions. There is a Java API for that. And you have like a full blown control over what you can do with this. There's a stream like API. It used to be called DSL. I don't know if it's still called DSL. It's technically not DSL, it's just like more high level API. And there's a more low level API that's called a processor API that allows you to build this, um, what the Kafka Streams has a notion of, um, nodes of this uh, direct acyclic graph. Direct acyclic graph, it is a, just um, the fancy word of describing data flow. How data goes from point A to point B and what's happening with this data. So um, 
you will be able to use any libraries. You, I, I've seen the, some people would be even um, using the integration with uh, 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 other systems, and they can build um, some sort of like indexes, build the caches uh, based on this type of information. Um, and uh, yeah, so the, the, I showed you that even though I access this uh, state store inside my application, it's a state store, it's, it's, it's a table, but technically, when it's in the up on Kafka, it's still a stream, so it's another stream. Uh, we, 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 there's, no <coughs> there's, a, there's no ability to do um, arbitrary query. And, and there is um, another project that was built on top of um, Kafka streams. I'll talk about this in a, in a few, um, in few, uh, few minutes. That actually allows you to do arbitrary queries. Um, and uh, interactive queries require you to implement your own server-side logic. Interactive queries allows you to kind of like um, get access or like expose those state stores, but they not give you, uh, say, protocol. So you still need to implement the server. So that's why I implemented this as a REST. Uh, there's a video somewhere on the internet. I use the gRPC to implement the similar, um, similar the type of functionality uh, inside my Kafka Streams application. So. Um, and uh, yeah, so this is basically, you can get access to um, any arbitrary fields, but with this, you need to be very verbose. You need to understand the format of this data, uh, serialization and deserialization. Also important thing, schemas. There's a lot of things that um, you need to take in in order to um, solve the, the, the problem of the querying. So there is a, there is a the, I'll, I'll talk about this. I'll talk about the kind of like a next evolution. So Kafka Streams is not, um, is not something that a random person would be used to connect to Kafka and start making sense out of it. All right. So, but what <laughs> random person would use uh, to connect to, um, um, to, um, to, to Kafka topic and get some sort of results? So let's talk about uh, streaming uh, SQLs. Um, and uh, because it turns out that um, we already have a pretty, uh, <clears throat> To rephrase uh, Jeff Goldblum from uh, Jurassic Park, uh, nature will find a way. So the people, the sequel will find a way, one way or another. Remember when the Hadoop started, you don't need anything. You write the Java jobs. Uh, any Hadoop people in, in the audience that remember the time? It's good because <laughs> after a certain time, there was a different implementation of SQL appeared that allows you to write your jobs using SQL. So SQL will find a way. And uh, with the streaming SQL, uh, in the recent couple years, there's like uh, the explosion. I can say like if you have a more than two, I can say this is going to be, it was explosion. Different tools that uh, um, one way or another solving this problem. Uh, and uh, materialized uh, Delta Stream, oh, um, materialized Delta Stream, Raising Wave, and a key SQL DB. Um, anyone use anything from, from this list? This talk is not super relevant. <laughs> anyway, I will explain this and I will give you an idea where you want to use this one or another. Um, some people might ask, what about Flink? Anyone? Flink? Few people. Okay, few people. Um, are you writing Scala uh, in Flink? No? Good, good. Um, so the, the, the answers, if it would be the, in the Germany, the probable answers would be uh, different because the Flink was created in... Uh, uh, University of Berlin is a kind of like a system of uh, um, kind of like a better way to do uh, what the Hadoop did. Uh, but over the years, it transformed into the something that it become a more, um, more generic uh, computational platform for both streaming and batch data. Uh, they consider um, Batch data is the kind of one of the according cases of the streaming data. We have a stream that is a, have a finite number, and there's a, a lot of things uh, can be done in uh, in the Flink, and uh, in this case, Flink would be uh, just a generic um, the computational system. There's no storage, there's no way. How, uh, there's a plugins that allow you uh, to read data from Kafka and uh, push data into um, into whatever source. Uh, but there's no, there's no, it's a computational platform and you need to maintain, oh, I didn't say this, with Kafka Streams, good thing about Kafka Streams, it's a library, so you can bring this to any, um, 
any uh, the framework, works great with Spring Boot, with Micronaut, with uh, like Quarkus and all this kind of stuff. So you will be able to, uh, to build this uh, stream processing applications. That's why it's a great uh, tool for building kind of like event-driven microservices. But again, it's uh, beyond this topic. So Flink, not today, buddy. This is very good uh, uh, technology, but we're not going to touch um, anything today about Flink, even though Flink has notion of SQL. But this is not the SQL what you're expecting. It's the language that would be used to um, translate the uh, SQL syntax into the actual jobs um, that will be uh, translated into Java API. Um, it, but since I, I promise not to talk about Flink, but two shots after, I'm talking about Flink. Um, essentially, with the Flink, you will have something like this. <clears throat> So um, if we need to uh, read the data from, uh, from the table, or from the Kafka, um, we will do something like this. We will create a table. Is it big enough? Can you see, um, can you see the screen? Let's do 150, my favorite one. Yeah. So the, um, we're reading data from um, all those messages we're reading from this. Um, there's output table that also will be writing data to output topic. And this is the job that does word count, the same example that I did. Um, we take a message, we split this by words, um, and after that uh, we do a flat map, or like in the, in the world of SQL it's called explode, some of the systems call it un, unnest, I guess. Uh, there would be another example that will be used similar thing. And after that, we're writing this data into, into, into Kafka topic. So um, again, don't be, um, it is not, it's not making the Flink a streaming database. Flink is a stream processing framework. Even though you can write your stream, uh, stream processing uh, functionality using uh, SQL. Okay, quickly, materialized. Uh, anyone, anyone use materialized? I think it's um, like if you, uh, a few people um, over there, nice. So um, essentially, there's a, another interesting pattern that you also will, will discover uh, quickly when you start looking to this one. So, Every system, every streaming system trying to be Kafka. So that's why we can see that um, there is a Red Panda that implements Kafka compatible protocol. There is a Pulsar that has Kafka on Pulsar um, kind of compatibility layer. There is a, um, the, some of the vendor specific implementation. Confluent Cloud has uh, the Kafka uh, compatible protocol, but underneath it's not a Kafka anymore. They, 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 build a lot, they rebuild everything from, uh, from, from uh, um, from, uh, for, for the cloud, uh, for cloud implementation. Now, for every database, every database trying to be like Postgres for some reasons, I don't know. Like you tell me, like if the Postgres win this database war, everyone using Postgres, anyone using MySQL these days? Not so much, Postgres, yeah, that's what I thought. So, and even for the systems like uh, the streaming SQL, they start adopting the, uh, uh, um, the, the, the wire protocol, maybe even compatibility with the SQL uh, uh, language. Um, and, and that's understandable because when you're trying to in introduce new tool, um, you cannot just force people to start using their stuff. Um, it, it would be kind of sort of not smart at least. Um, so that's why they're trying to find a way how we can get existing users or existing tooling. So that's why uh, support of uh, Postgres uh, compatible protocol, um, it's the uh, way to go. Uh, so the, the, the tooling and application development and the frameworks will be, uh, will be used. So they have the concept of materialized views. Um, this materialized views would be uh, updated in the real time uh, based on the, um, um, <clears throat> based on this, uh, the streams that come in into, um, into Kafka topic, things like that. Um, those views are persistent and queryable, even though like maybe the, the Kafka might not be available at the time, so they have capability of the storage. So with this, we can find a definition of the streaming database. With streaming database, it's not only you have ability to do stream processing or like stateful stream processing, but also you have some sort of storage where you can have, uh, where you can store all this data in case you need to query this like uh, the, um, afterwards, or maybe um, uh, you don't need to um, to expose this Kafka abstraction into your application. So that's why table and materialized view that would be uh, constantly updated is the way to go. 
and yeah, like I said, the tooling and the wire protocol is uh, compatible uh, for materialize. Also, also, since it's uh, uh, now they position themselves as a real database, you will be using, you will be able to do all sorts of analytical stuff, um, and you will be able to do things with uh, with, uh, with queries. So um, I should have moved this slide um, slightly after because Delta Stream was uh, one of the one of the ideas that original creator, one of the engineers uh, who created KSQL DB, he uh, he decided, okay, what if what if I can go and design the data, uh, data uh, streaming database for the cloud solely for the purpose of running on the cloud? I don't have any um, notion to running this in um, um, on premises. So I don't need to uh, worry about different uh, uh, re recommendation for the hardware, what the people would be using. So what will happen? So that's, that's, what, that's why um, he went and created this like a Delta Stream solution. Um, it is also has a streaming SQL capabilities. Um, it has a capability of serverless, just you know, you run the stuff. Uh, or if you care about uh, where the, your data is placed, uh, they have a concept of bring your own cluster. Um, that's kind of like, one of the ways how the cloud uh, um, meets uh, requirements for certain organizations to keep uh, keep uh, keep the data, so they providing control plane that will be um, uh, talking to data plane that will be running in your, um, I guess VPC, not particular data center, but rather than VPC in your cloud. Um, same integration pr uh, with Kafka exists. Um, and the concept of uh, materialized views and the streaming pipelines, that's the cornerstone for um, the Delta Stream. And it has uh, capabilities so it can perform SQLs and do uh, analytical queries. Rising Wave. Um, very, uh, interesting, uh, the, the very interesting exhibit uh, we have it here. So um, it has uh, open source version. It was released in 2021 or something like that, um, and also was designed uh, for a cloud air solution, but with a slightly different approach. They're saying, okay, so we will also allow people to run the stuff uh, themselves, so that's why there is open source version. Um, again, use this with a grain of salt, uh, but some of the ideas that they uh, get, uh, they actually took this from the Flink, but implemented this in Rust. So they decided to take some, some good internet points and implement in the modern cool language. Um, and uh, I kind of like it. Uh, same integration, Flink, etc. Let me show you at least how this uh, raising wave thingy looks like. So in this case, let me do uh, Docker Compose down. I'll kill my previous container. I'll go to raising wave. Uh, it's here, it's the raising wave. Raising wave and just do make stuff. So the running few containers, uh, again, running Kafka, running uh, raising wave, creating topics. Um, and where's my uh, the console here? Again, empty Kafka topic uh, topics should be created. Um, surprise, surprise, but ah, okay, my application continued to run. Uh, I didn't stop it, so that's why my Kafka streams uh, reconnected and start uh, messing around with the new cluster. Um, that's cool. Anyway, so with the, uh, with the Raisin Wave and uh, with other solutions, so I use the Raisin Wave just one of the examples, and because it's written in Rust, I think it's cool. Um, the, um, the way how it looks like, where's my main file? Um, we're gonna run. Uh, it's a, um, sorry, wrong one, wrong directory. Uh, we're going to reason wave. So in this case, I'm running a, um, the, the Postgres um, client. And if I'll do something like select version um, instead of uh, the Postgres, is actually tells me that this is actually a rising wave. So the same tooling uh, that you use for Postgres should work with here. Um, and one of the examples that I wanna try to do here, 
do, 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 uh, we do have uh, input source. So they have this uh, concept of uh, input source that will be reading data from my um, from my Kafka topic. And one of the things that I'm not interested in this particular case in sync, even though sync capability is available. So what I can do, I can create this materialized view that will include a word and count um, that would be sub-select from this um, the SQL that will be parse the message and will do this explode um, or unnest or flat map type of functionality. So if I'll just do select star from word counts, Um, it's nothing, which is totally cool because we do have a, uh, we need to produce something and we're doing this, uh, yep, this one. And do, so I will uh, uh, write something in Kafka topic, in this case, uh, JSON with some, some stuff, uh, push it there. When I read this, my materialized view refreshed immediately and now I have a word count uh, type of functionality that you can do um, also analytical queries on top of it because you have a full-blown uh, PostgreSQL in your disposal. Now, <clears throat> I have a personal kind of like a, um, a personal sweet spot in my heart for, for this particular fella. Um, I used to work at Confluent and I remember the time when we announced this and how the people were super excited about have ability to query your stream using SQL. And after that, we um, put a lot of effort in order to make this actual database. But in this case, again, uh, as I said, the query engine plus storage equals streaming database. In this case, our storage will be Kafka. And um, KSQL DB uh, provides also table abstraction. And uh, this table abstraction actually backed by KTable because KSQL DB um, is implemented using Kafka streams. And every time when we write a uh, query using a KSQL DB, it will be turned into Kafka uh, streams topology. Uh, there's a two types of uh, pull queries and uh, push queries. Terrible name, uh, didn't come up with this. I'm more like uh, just a regular query and continuous query. So continuous query is something that when the data constantly arriving, that's your, your um, um, pull, uh, push query. And the pull query is your traditional when you do select star type of thing. So it was supported all these things. There was a... <clears throat> some of the time uh, when um, it uh, was gaining some sort of popular popularity. Anyone uh, was used uh, GCQL DB in the past? Maybe a few people. I apologize for that. Um, <laughs> yeah, because I think the, the ideas were correct, but the uh, technology uh, limitations, they were not there yet. Uh, Kafka streams suffered with a little bit of like a scalability issues and the storage issues. And there's even full-blown startup trying to solve all these issues. And now it seems to be kind of like adoption and um, um, kind of like usage of KSQL DB uh, is, is, is going down because the Confluent is not um, investing much on KSQL DB anymore. Flink apparently is the next big thing. Um, <clears throat> so let's talk about quickly some other solutions that are available. Um, the cloud uh, data warehouses. Um, the solutions uh, um, like um, the BigQuery, uh, Redshift, even though it's Redshift, but the icon is blue, um, and Snowflake, uh, and uh, I, I, just, uh, I forgot the name, Spectral or something like that. Um, I, I'm not position myself as an expert of those solutions. I see one common thing. They use blue logos for some reasons. I don't know. Like, if you think about that you're doing something wrong in your life, think about this, that in these big companies, there might be like a department of like few people who have a meetings about what color of, uh, color of icon um, they need to use for, uh, for their solution. So data warehouse, um, uh, solely historically cloud-based uh, uh, analytical uh, storages. So data warehouses that uh, maybe your employer used to have in your organization, now uh, Snowflake will, 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 will host it. If you don't want to Snowflake, you're probably using Redshift. Um, they support ingestion from the batching and the streaming sources, and um, they still rely on um, structured data, but it is um, a historically and uh, it's, it's a batch, batch oriented systems. Um, next, uh, data lakes. Data lakes, um, it's a, a technologies that are focused not on structured data, but rather than unstructured data. Just kind of like bring this stuff to me and we'll figure out later. And this later never 
um, become. So it's become the, the S3 when everyone dumping the files, and uh, there's a bunch of different solutions that allows you to use this um, storage to get access. Um, and data lakes uh, have uh, capabilities where your storage and your compute are uh, drastically uh, segregated. You probably have seen use cases where we can do, you know, the, the, you, you have your, your data bricks and your S3, they are running on, you know, two different, uh, in two different places. Um, and the reads are slow, and streaming historically is difficult for data lakes. I'm talking too much about those. Last but not least, um, again, don't think if I put this at the last, uh, it's the best. Probably there is, but again, there's no right solution. There's always trade-offs. So real-time analytical database, Apache Pino, uh, ClickHouse, um, Apache Druid is just a few examples of modern uh, databases, analytical databases for cloud world distributed usually computation and storage separated because, um, because that's why not? Because you want to have a, a abilities to um, scale those independently. And they designed for, ev even like uh, the real-time OLAP database, designed for high concurrency. You, you're exposing those systems to your users, to your applications. Um, and uh, the, the query latency would be much lower than you, your typical OLAP database, uh, the query response. Uh, ingesting streaming data. So I do have uh, on my GitHub, and uh, the, you have an example where we just like have this um, uh, data from Kafka would be constantly ingested, and this data also will be available for query immediately. Um, without, um, uh, but but this will rely on um, defining the structure of this data. So that's why the real-time analytical databases like this they will be focused on um, um, on um, structured data. Uh, integration with Kafka exists, um, conventions, yeah, so it's used as standard SQL for all these operations. So um, Apache Pino, this database was uh, d developed uh, for solving some of the LinkedIn use cases. Every time when you go to LinkedIn these days, you will see uh, who viewed your profile. That's analytical query that goes into Apache Pino based on the events that happened on LinkedIn that land inside the Kafka. Those events will generate this who viewed your profile view. Um, and the query go directly to, to, um, to Apache Pino. Um, again, there's no right or wrong solution. There's uh, some solutions that can solve your problems. There's always trade-offs. Um, when, you, when you're selecting something or choosing something, use your own judgment. You know better what is important for your system, what is important for your business. So um, use this with a grain uh, of salt a little bit. Probably you already have the best solution, something that you already know. There is nothing embarrassing in this. If you write a Java application that will be populating uh, um, some sort of like a distributed cache or maybe some embedded um, the SQL database, also fine. Um, it's not a bad thing if you're using something that you already know. Um, performance, big, big, big question, especially when I travel and talk about those systems in the uh, uh, Eastern European countries, Western European countries, people like to talk about performance, scalability, and all this kind of stuff. One of the things that you need to take into account, the rates of queries and how, um, so, um, one of the speakers that was on the stage before, he also said like, you know, use your own benchmarks for your data, not only synthetical data uh, that's available. Um, also, community. Um, the way how I learned my first programming language, I learned because I knew the guy who knew Pascal. If I would knew the guy who knew assembly, probably my life would turn out a different way. But community, where you can ask the questions, it's also important. When you're creating solution, find a way where you can get your question asked. If it's super toxic community and the people are super arrogant, you probably don't want to be around this type of community. And even though they have a brilliant tool, you know, you just like not experience and enjoy using this tool. Um, and uh, with this, um, your application code uh, Kafka somewhere, and there's uh, some monsters in between uh, that you need to explore yourself. I try to put something that um, will help you to start with. I do have a bunch of examples. Um, always reach out to me in, in Twitter. You can, um, I can give you some, uh, some advices if you have. Um, now I need your advice. If you like this talk, just write a few, few notes for, um, for my feedback form. Uh, if you didn't like this talk, 
write a few notes in my feedback form. Um, I'm going to be you know, reading those and crying. Um, if you need anything, uh, uh, any, uh, yeah, so this, this is the um, uh, anonymous. I'm not going to, you know, the police uh, who will writing the uh, responses, but hey. Um, and if you're interested in learning a little bit more about this uh, the Apache Pino thingy that um, uh, we didn't touch like uh, in, uh, in the broad, we do have a whole website that is dedicated for this thing. Uh, it's called dev.startree.ai. Um, with this, my name is Victor Gamov, and as always, have a nice day.